Thank you for joining us for this final WPRP episode of the year. I'm Madison Yates. And I'm Olivia Mudd. PRP's welding department made its big debut at this year's Kentucky Derby Festival Bed Races. WPRP caught up with students and staff who helped with this project. A certain set of specs that uh, they can get that they have for the race. And um, it's basically like a, a full size bed frame. And uh, we will build the structure, put the wheels on it, steering mechanism, and make it to where I believe they have four people to push it. We'll it, probably have a conglomeration of all of them. We'll have, get everybody together, do a little brainstorming, pull some ideas together, and see what we can come up with. That'll be cool for Wave Three. The first time we've ever done the bid for the for the race, you know, for the races, and they reached out to us. So yeah, it's always exciting when a news outlet reaches out, you know, um, through email communication. Right now. Um, Basically, we're waiting on the materials to come in so that we can actually get started on the construction of it. And then as we get started on the construction, um, that'll all go, I think, pretty quick, really. It shouldn't be too bad. I think uh, this deadline was the end of the month, end of March, well, I believe. Well, it's for um, prior to Derby, so it'll be in the, after Thunder a little, over Louisville and Derby will be in between there, whatever day the race is going. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see it all go down. Bed races are one of the events kind of kicks off every year you get a team of five people together four pushers and a driver and you race around in a figure eight sort of track there are two divisions you've got your fun division and you've got your competitive division we are entering the fun division because we are also calling the races um yeah the the i believe they start at seven o'clock and they usually go to around nine and the winners advance the losers of course will you know the day and at the end of it all, the winners in both divisions race each other for the final prize. So right now it is just a collaboration between WAVE and the PRP welding students. Um, the actual team itself will be comprised of people solely from WAVE. And we're, you know, this is not going to be sponsored or anything like that. It's just a partnership between your and us to get this done. And so one of our, our final question is like, how did you guys take PRP? Well, you know, actually, we were so we knew that we had to get this frame welded together because it's not something you can just go and buy, obviously. And when we were thinking about welders, we knew we had just recently done a story on um, one of your welding classes. And we thought it would be a wonderful opportunity to not just have more collaboration between you know, your school and WAVE, which is something we love to do, but also get some young local talent involved in a bigger project and to be able to you know showcase it to everybody on the day of the races okay well thank you Carson for this this is really helpful yeah no problem thank you as we quickly approach the end of the school year many are already looking forward to the next year WPAP reporter Cam Yates takes a look at how the paw print is preparing with the school year coming to an end the new editor-in-chief of the paw print decisions have been made I talked to the student about her ideas and thoughts for next year. Because I thought it would be a fun experience and I get to, I love writing, so I get to show everybody that that's my hobby. Um, we're going to have more bilingual, like, p <laughs> students, yeah, students around and we're going to do more Hispanic features and we're going to have a lot more people in the classroom. <laughs> Pretty well. We... We do a lot of writing, so if you're interested in writing, you, I think you'd have a fun time. Um, it's a really fun experience, and I would 100% recommend it. It's a really easy class as well, so if you're trying to do something easy and fun, come do it. I decided to also interview Miss Scott Burger to get her thoughts and opinions on the new year. Jasmine has um, been really good every day this year about keeping the deadlines. She's really good at editing and she seemed to really enjoy layout. And I asked her about it and she said she'd be interested in doing it. So I think she'll do a great job next year. I think it's going to be different. My big hope for next year is that more people start reading it because I know a lot of kids um, aren't reading it. So I'll, if anybody has any ideas on what we could do to increase readership, I'm open. And last, I interviewed the current chief and editor of the paw print, Madison Neitz, to get her final thoughts and opinions. I recommend the 
Jasmine because uh, when we develop our stories and we make them, she always has great ideas. She's always one of the first people to turn in her stories. And she's just an incredible writer, and I can tell that she's dedicated to her craft. So um, kind of watching over all the juniors in the class, she was the one that I definitely had my eye on the most when I was deciding who I would give the role of editor-in-chief to. I think the paw print is going to be special next year. I feel like every year with a new editor-in-chief, um, with a new editor who has a new role, um, it's going to be something different and special. So it's not going to be the same way that I did it because I know next year they're doing a bunch of multilingual uh, articles. They're going to get a bunch of um, Spanish-speaking students to help out with it so it can be um, dual language. But um, I definitely think it's going to be it's going to be different in its own special ways. So as the senior kind of going away, leaving it to a bunch of underclassmen who are gonna become seniors next year, I'm really excited for everyone who's taking over. Uh, the Paul Prince started last year. We kind of built it up from nothing. And I really hope that what I've been able to help Scott Berger create can last for a long time, even as I leave and go to college. So I'd say just join it if you're very interested in it. And um, I believe it'll be good for the years to come. So, this is Cameron from WPRP signing off. PRP's weapon detection system has been live for a few months. We check in with students and staff as many are still adjusting to the new devices. My name is Nolan Lynch with the WPRP, and I'm going to just fill you in on a little update of the weapons detection system. And everything seems to be running smoothly lately. I mean, we've been having our lovely staff members up here helping us every day through the mornings. I mean, every once in a while it'll beep, maybe if it's a Chromebook or a charter that's been left in. But everything's been running smoothly for the most part. We've been getting in and out just fine, but I'd say the weapons detection has been working just how it tended to be. Since the uh, implementation of the weapons detection system, our school has been a lot safer. Me personally, uh, I feel a lot safer knowing that if a gun or a weapon was to come through, that it would be detected uh, or anything else that, that could be dangerous to me or other students. Uh, so personally, I felt a lot more safe um, with the evolved technology. Um, we did have uh, something found back in February, but uh, the a crisis may have been averted because we had the weapons detection systems uh, and nothing happened uh, because we had these uh, technolo this technology in place. So uh, I really think it's a great thing for our school and uh, other schools around JCPS. PRP's Black Student Union welcomed some very special guests in April. WPAP reporter Aaron Bowers caught up with them. Hello, my name is Gail King. I'm from here in Louisville, Kentucky, and I'm here at Pleasure Ridge Park High School uh, to speak to the Black Student Union. My granddaughter, Charlize Williams, uh, is a member here. Um, I started my musical career here, traveled around the world a little bit, and ended up back here at home. And I'm still busy playing and singing and doing certain things. So I'm going to share, actually, uh, a little bit of my life story with uh, the members of the union. She was one of the few friends that she was able to make uh, on that whole military base because it wasn't a pretty thing, and you can see she was a dark-skinned woman too, so she uh, went through a lot of trials, a lot of name-calling, a lot of uh, people trying to get her out of it, and she persevered through everything, which is an amazing thing. She never got in trouble, she never started any trouble, and she just took everything that they dished out until she got out of the service and came back home. I think you can go to the next one. So, ah, these are me. So, as I was growing up, um, I knew that I really liked music and I knew that I really liked animals. And I always had to have some kind of animal and I always had to try to play or something. I would draw a keyboard on paper and act like I was playing. So, unbeknownst to me, my mother saved and saved until she could actually buy me a real piano. And then one day, there it was in the house and I couldn't believe it. Paid for lessons and uh, she bought me a guitar. This is St. Williams, which is down on 13th and Oak, and I played the first guitar mass. Um, I don't think you hear his on there, no. But I played the first guitar mass here in Louisville when we went from the organs and the ah, and got more a little, this kind of stuff kind of happened uh, back in the 60s and the 70s. And so I was the first one in Louisville, and they 
Hi, my name is Lance Newman, Lance G. Newman II. I am a PRP alumni, class of 06, and I'm here at uh, the Panther BSU. Uh, go over same thing, some, some life lessons, uh, some wonderful places, and where uh, PRP has taken me uh, in my multidisciplinary artistry. So uh, it's going to be fun. Thank you all for having me. My name's Lance, and I'm also known as Mr. Spread Love. What them start with? Lance and love. What it start with? So if you listen to the language that's left on my lips, it leaves loitering legacies with literary letters that live liquidating the link between living a life lost littered in litany and a languishing liberty. Lackluster lectures leave legality leaning, so leeway and laxity let liability keep leaking, but lyrical legislation is liberal in liberation, so my libretto license is legit. I'm just a legal abiding. Y'all with me? We good? We good? Okay, okay, okay. okay. Listen, the arts. I got more from Miss King than I think y'all did, and that's only because I'm in the arts, and I'm also a professional artist. So, like, when you talk about writing plays, when you talk about writing scores, when you talk about writing for different instruments and stuff, um, please, please reach out. And if you don't, I'm gonna find you. I saw the, um, I saw the, uh, the piece y'all did with Stage One. Uh, yes. Yes. I was like, I was wondering why you're so familiar. I was like, okay. Wonderful work. Thank you. And y'all, again, I, so I, I graduated from PRP 2006. This is my jacket that I got from the soccer team when I played. <laughs> so I was on the soccer team. Uh, and as a social experiment, I joined the football team just because I, was, I wasn't black enough, right? You, you, you know, I was like the only black dude on the soccer team. So, you know, y'all know how we are. Y'all know how we are, right? Um, so I was like, cool, let me go ahead and I'm going to switch sports. My brother came in. He's like... He just got into the Hall of Fame. Uh, he went to Notre Dame, graduated from Notre Dame, got a football athletic scholarship to Notre Dame, graduated from there. Brandon Newman. Um, but, uh, you know, I didn't get, in, I got inducted to the Hall of Fame, but it wasn't for no sports. It was for all of this. All right, if you Google my name, I'm a multidisciplinary artist, all right? So, like, there's, I started with poetry. I, 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 wrote, I wrote poetry. When I was 13 years old, I was getting bullied. People said that I talked too white. People said that I was too proper and I ain't had the coolest shoes on and whatnot. So I wrote a diss poem about my bullies. And then I said it on stage. And like all my peers was like, damn, he's flaming you all. You know what I mean? And I realized that poetry was a way that I could like combat the things in my life that was coming at me. I was like, okay, this is going to be the art vehicle. Some of the strongest individuals in the state of Kentucky recently competed in a weightlifting competition, including one of WPRP's own, Shatreya Harrison. I'm WPRP reporter Shatreya Harrison reporting on the weightlifting competition that was March 24th, 2024. The weightlifting competition was myself and Molinex. We competed for full power, classic raw. We went for squat, deadlift, and bench. The order would be we squatted first, then we benched, and then we deadlifted. I walked away with four state records along with my first place medal. And if you would like to do any type of weightlifting competitions, Mullinex is our weightlifting coach, as you can see here. It's a bittersweet moment for many in the class of 2024. Senior night, WP reporters, Madison Yates and Hank Burns take us back. Pleasures Park High School Winter Sports celebrated their senior night on February 23rd, 2023. With heartfelt memories and a tribute to all the seniors, it was a very emotional and heartwarming night.
The Winter Sports Senior Night honored seniors involved in TRP's basketball teams, the cheer team, the dance team, and track. The seniors in basketball who were honored were Tania Weathers, Alyssa Fox, Janae Bolin, Terry Merriweather, Aiden Glass, and Kara Roberts. The dance team seniors who were honored were Addison Atkins and Lyric Burris. And the cheer team seniors who were honored were Jada Murray, Tanner Fentress, Brooklyn Taylor, Emma Bartley, Galen Silva, Brooklyn Cole, and Quentin Wallace. The PRP Athletics Department is proud of all of its seniors and can't wait to see what they do in the future. It was a very exciting night. Our girls basketball team took the victory against Moore, while the boys lost a hard-fought overtime battle against the Mustangs. For WPRP, I'm Maddie Yates. And I'm Hank Burns, WPRP, signing off. Raising funds and having fun. WPRP's Olivia Mudd takes you to the Ridge Regiment's annual car show. Today is the annual Ridge Regiment car show. Soon, cars and bikes will be showing you to show off their paint jobs and engines. Yes, it is. So what made you want to come? I uh, saw it on a website and I graduated from here in 76, so just come back out. It's a 1976 Chevrolet Corvette. I bought the car in 1979. It's been customized from the front to the rear. Uh, the motor's been rebuilt, transmission's rebuilt, the suspension, uh, radiator, gas tank, brakes, uh, everything. Interior's been redone. So uh, basically a new car, just an old body. Since 1979. Thank you for your participation. I hope you are successful today. Thank you very much. Thanks for talking to us. We had a band parent, uh, April Gaddy, who was very familiar with car shows, and also, who else was it? Re Rebecca. Becky. Becky Domit, and they thought it would be a great idea to uh, bring it into the community, have it here on PRP's campus, and hopefully raise money for the band. You got that right. Oh, it's a secret. No, I think I'm going to go with uh, the blue GTO back here. Yeah. Uh -oh. Although I do like the Challenger. Uh, well, anything at this point would be a good help. Um, last tally I saw, it was 70 cars, so that's $15 a car, so I'm expecting a pretty good profit. I know our breakfast did really well, so just see what lunch would do, and we'll just go from there. Okay. So the awards that I know about today is the Director's Choice, obviously, the Senior's Choice, Best in Class, and then there was 25 top cars of the whole entire show that's being recognized today. Best in show? Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. best. Yeah. Well, thank you, Wendy, our band booster president, and Miss Burnell, our... No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I will fix that. Go. <laughs> well, thank you, Wendy, who's our band booster president, and Miss Burnell, our band director. That's a wrap for this year's car show. Congratulations to all the winners for WPRP. I'm it's a special time of the year for us seniors here at PRP. As WPRP's class of 2024 prepares to sign off for the final time, we wanted to share a special message from some of our fellow seniors. Hey, WPRP's DeMarco Turner again, back for our last episode. And today we're going to be uh, bringing you guys around, talking to seniors and teachers, asking about their uh, senior year experience and how they feel about graduating. I'm pretty sad, you know. Um, uh, maybe on the camera, JJ. You know, it's our last year getting stuff done. And thank you. Flexing over my senior years, it was very productive. I did a lot more schoolwork than I did my junior year, and I made a lot more friends than I thought I would. I think my impact on the school was positive. I've always embraced kind of like just being happy and not really caring about what other people do and just be to yourself. My plan is after my, my senior year to go down to Florida and be a sales representative for a roofing company that my dad owns. Uh, for sure, for sure, I will miss it. I will miss the environment. I miss some of the teachers and the staff that work here because they all just really care about the students. And I'll miss seeing my friends every day. I am indeed excited, you know, excited. I have, you know, a lot of attributes. So I'm just happy to go to college, you know, do my thing in college, man. What college you go to? To be determined. I do not know yet. I do not know. So you're graduating this year. Are you uh, sad to leave the teachers and students behind? You know what, I'm not because people already tell me I look like a super senior. I'm only 18, so uh, 
I'm ready to leave. Go get rich by 21. Thank you so much, Jay. You're welcome. Hey, hey. Have a good year. Um, I'm excited for the class of 2024. This has been a really good group, personally. Um, this has been my one and only class thus far that I had from sophomores to seniors. We stayed in the building. <laughs> We never left for COVID or anything like that. Um, we had a couple masks and, you know, times where we had to wear a mask and we had a couple NTI runs. But other than that, like, it's exciting to see this group um, kind of in its entirety when it comes to my pathway from having them for three straight years. They are a special group. They are probably one of my very most favorite groups of seniors. I have really come and grown to love this group, um, I call them my big babies. Um, so that is with all due respect that they know who they are. But anyway, so I, um, yeah, it's been a good, it's been a good year. I think we'll see a lot of good things out of this class and I'm excited. I'm excited about our final WPRP episode. Everything's kind of wrapping up. So it's, um, it's fun. It's a good time of year. Uh, thank you so much. You're welcome. Oh, my IWPRP, we had a great year, Kobe year, 2024. Class 24, out of here. Congratulations to all of the class of 2024. And for the final time, thank you for joining us on this episode of WPRP.